there are many believers who because of the reality of the times that we live in it seems as though most people view god today to be a necessary luggage that they have to carry on their path to finding fulfillment on their path to becoming relevant so god and the things of the kingdom for many people is like a necessary luggage and it ought not to be so and there are many who started well with god and then because of the pursuit for things it may not be evil things just the pursuit for maybe education family life and so on and so forth just found out that they continue to neglect the things of god until right now they are in a state of spiritual tragedy i want to start by discussing the issue of backsliding and retrogression there is a possibility in a believer's life that you can lose your fire you can lose your vigor you can lose your passion is that true the bible is full of men who started well and at the end of their lives it was as though they had lost their values they had lost everything i think we should start with that and then we'll do a little discussion on growth within the times that we have been my passion to challenge the body of christ particularly over our spiritual states more than just helping believers understand the things of the kingdom and understand the ways of the kingdom it is first important that our relationships with god be intact any discussion on kingdom truths the mysteries of the kingdom is absolutely useless if our state of heart with god is faulty is that true there are a few signs medically speaking when you come to a doctor and you begin to complain i have this and that the doctor would usually want to use signs and symptoms it will help in diagnosing what is wrong with the patient is that true for instance if you come to a doctor and you say i've been running temperature I'm having headache, I've been feeling cold, I've been vomiting pains in my bones. He can easily use those signs and it may be fair to begin to diagnose that probably you have a fever. Now, there are signs that show a healthy spiritual life. You can't just say I'm healthy spiritually, arbitrarily. There are exact signs that you can use and indices to know that an individual spiritual life is buoyant and healthy and vibrant. You can also see signs that show that something is wrong with your spiritual life. Can we examine a few signs? The Bible is very clear as to the fact that if a believer is not stable spiritually, if something begins to affect your spiritual life, you can know that you are retrogressing spiritually. And the goal is not to condemn you. The goal is to open your eyes so that you will quickly repent and realign your ways. We are going to consider at least five signs, vital signs. Vital signs that show spiritual retrogression. The moment you see any or all these signs in your life, spiritually speaking, the life of your spouse, the life of your children, know that there is danger as far as your spiritual life is concerned are we ready vital sign number one a significant deviation from your love for the lord and the things of this world the first sign that there is something wrong with your spiritual life is when there is a significant deviation from your love for god your passion for god and the things that have to do with the kingdom one of the ways that you know that a person loves the lord and is passionate about god is that that love and that passion in fact the proof of love is pursued the degree to which you are able to press into the things of god with joy it was the psalmist that said i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord 
the moment the concept the idea of god and the things of god begin to inconvenience you it is a vital sign that something is wrong with your spiritual life passion for church passion for prayer passion for the word of god anything that has to do with god seems to be an interruption and you may passively do it just to fulfill the ritual of religion something is wrong as i'm saying this right now the holy ghost is opening the eyes of some of us to say that this is what i've been trying to tell you i've been trying to show you in dreams i've been trying to show you through the teachings of your pastor that something is wrong with your spiritual life passion for god people come to church and in 10 minutes they are tired and then you end the service and they can stand for two hours in front of a car just in so it's not that they were really tired it is a proof of spiritual slumber i hope we're learning already vital sign number one a significant deviation from your love for the lord there are believers who only open their bibles on sunday and bless god for technology right now there are people who don't even know where their bibles are you would think this is very basic and elementary except that it is that carelessness that has led to the continual decadence of many believers how do you know you are losing the fire from for god i'm still on point one because you see love for god is like energy you can't say i don't love god and then i don't love anything else it is either the whole energy is invested towards god or something else may be stealing it at every given point in your life there must be something that is stealing your passion so it is either your love for god or the cares of this world remember apostle john taught us this he says love not the world not the things that are in the world it says if any man loves the world the love of the father is not in him it's as simple and honest as that the moment you begin to have an obsession an addiction for the cares of this world something is already wrong with your passion for the things of god let me hurry up number two what is the second vital sign of spiritual retrogression self-centered living as against christ-centered living the second vital sign is you become the god of your own destiny self can i tell you this most believers think the only thing to be corrected in a believer's life is sin sin is the primary issue but not the only issue to be corrected you can correct the issue of sin but if you leave the issue of self, that believer is still in trouble. It takes correcting both the sin issue and the self issue to bring the believer to a point of victory. There are many believers by the grace of God, God has helped them to deal with the sin issue, which is a major issue, but not the only issue. If your vehicle has a problem, say your tire pressure has a problem you don't have fuel in your car are we together your headlamps have pro they all are problems but not to the same degree you can manage and drive in the daytime without a headlamp you can manage and drive even when your tire is not properly gauged but you can't drive without fuel is that true so with respect to the programs or the problems in that car your focus can be putting fuel in the car but if the car is now fuel and you ignore the remaining ones when your tire is flat you still will not be able to move even though you have solved the fuel problem many believers have focused on the sin problem which is a serious problem by the way and after dealing with it now they believe they are no more living in sin but self you know what self means self is a desire to be the god of your own destiny it is a dangerous issue in fact the primary assignment listen carefully the primary assignment of the holy spirit in a believer's life when you give your life to jesus christ it brings you to a point where christ is enthroned in your life 
Christ enthroned in a believer's life is what Paul calls death. In Galatians 2.20, it says, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I that lives. Are you seeing now? But Christ that lives in me. And it says, the life that I live in the flesh, that is the body, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Many believers are still self-centered. You know what it means to be self-centered? Provided I benefit from it. I don't care whether Jesus is glorified. I don't care whether anybody is blessed. If everybody dies and I do well while rising, so be it. You see this happen even among believers. Yet the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. That there was a disposition that Jesus had. That even though he was God and did not claim it to be robbery, he humbled himself. The moment there is an obsession to glorify self, Apostle Joshua Selman, an obsession to glorify self. This is where most of the trouble among believers come from titles reputation all of these things they are wonderful but they are largely expressions of self the moment jesus becomes enthroned in your life can i tell you you will have only one singular motivation to see jesus high glorified and revealed in and through your life that's it that anything that does not directly lead to the revelation of Jesus and the glorification of the same is not your interest at all. This is what it means to be Christ conscious. To be Christ conscious does not mean to be a good preacher or just to go to church or to participate in spiritual activities. You can do all of those things and yet you are full of yourself. I can stand to preach. And even though I'm preaching well, the whole idea is to become the center of the focus. Not that Jesus be revealed. Are we learning? Many believers have not been taught how to give up self. Do you know how difficult it is to give up self? To give up self means to take your reputation, like the woman with the alabaster box. Take your pride, your achievements and everything and pour it like a drink offering. And say, Lord, I am nothing without you. That for as long as I live, it is Jesus who will be seen in and through my life. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. All I want is for you for you to be glorified you know that you are retrogressing spiritually when jesus christ the revelation of him no longer becomes the pivot behind what you are doing there are many people who give but the purpose is not to see the purposes of Jesus Christ advanced. I can give us an exchange to make a name. I can preach just for you to hear good preaching from a man of God. Can I tell you, the ultimate litmus test that gives weight to your spiritual activity is not the activity itself. It is the motivation behind that activity. You can do something so powerful and yet in the realm of the spirit it does not carry any weight because the motivation was never to see Jesus glorified. I can come and sing here but in that singing it is not just for you to hear the song and to be blessed. It is for you to acknowledge such display of music prowess. I can come and preach just for you to see a, a, a sound doctrinal and theological exegesis to the degree that you add those ministerial accolades. Can I tell you, many of us, if not all of us at one point or the other, have been guilty of the obsession to see self-glorified. 
And when you come before, you see, in conferences like this, it's a time of deep reflection and repentance. You don't come and say, okay, I'm trying. No, 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 no. You have to be open before God. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. That's what his presence is supposed to do. Are we together? There were many people who were doing well spiritually until they got jobs, until they married, until they got political positions. And God becomes an interruption to you as though you were using him as a ladder to climb. And now that you are comfortable, Jesus, you and your nonsense should leave me. The day I'm in trouble, I can call you. Self-centered living. It has to be about me. If this committee in church is not about me, if I'm not the epicenter, we'll scatter it. If this choir is not about me, we'll scatter it. If this preaching is not about me. I'm telling you, one of my greatest prayers is not to be a great man of God known all over the world. No. That in and through my life, Jesus can be seen. When John came, John got it right before he messed up later on. He said, I may, I'm, that I may decrease. John 3, 31, I believe. That he may increase. Now, that's powerful. Can I be honest with you? If you decrease so that Jesus increases in your life, in a strange way, you will never go out of relevance. I always give this example for those of you who follow the ministry. Please, I want you to look at this podium. Everyone, please let me have your attention. Look at this podium. Did you know that my Bible is resting? This, this section of the podium is really where my attention is. But can you ignore the bars that hold this? But that is not the, set, that is not the point of focus. Is that true? But it's impossible to put your gaze here and ignore the bar that is holding it. This bar that is holding it is you. You are the one lifting Jesus. He is the central focus. But it's impossible to see Jesus and leave you out of the picture. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. morning saying apostle i'm not a sinner I, I by god's grace i've solved that problem we are talking of self here is can i can i remember jesus when i look at you let me tell you how you know that self is dead the more they look at you the more they forget about you and another image is projected through you when you look at the mirror you don't focus on the glass the mirror is so is so dedicated to its work. When you look at it, you see what the mirror reflects. The mirror has never been under pressure to make you say, are, are you aware that I'm plated with gold? The mirror has a singular assignment to reflect the image. My one desire is that you be praised. That you be praised. That you be praised. It's my one desire that you be praised. That you be praised. That you be praised. How do you know that you are alive to yourself? The language of me, my I, my children my car my achievement uh-huh that is the language of self the bible says a man can receive nothing except it is given to him from above have you read that in your bible we have to obtain grace from god this obsession to want to be the face behind achievement now don't get me wrong it is god's desire to lift us but we have to be careful many have made this mistake to their tragedy Vital sign number two. 
self-centered living as against Christ-centered living. Many times when I finish meetings and my phone is full of all kinds of text messages, Apostle Joshua Selman, you are this man, you are blah, blah, and people say all kinds of things in the whole of this Africa. Have I seen it? And sometimes I lift up the text before God and I say, deliver me from this evil. I, I, lit, I mean it. I'm not saying the people are bad. They are sincere. But can I tell you, people can clap you to your grave. It's not only persecution that kills. Honor can kill too. They can bring you. You read about God's generals. And you will read about people who they were doing well. There is a healthy applause. There is a, a healthy way to acknowledge God in you. But there is a way that becomes idolatry and anything that stands the way of God, he fights it even if it's him that gave you. Church is quiet. We came for a conference. Glory be to the name of the Lord. This is how believers are pruned. This is how it works. Vital sign number two. As, as I'm speaking like this, in all honesty, you look at your life and you can see that in truth, I'm guilty of this. I came from a background where nobody seemed to have recognized our growth and chances are excellent that that temptation is welling up within me. Do you know, not every closed door is demonic. There are doors is God himself that close because of his law for you. Because if he opens that door for you in that unrenewed state, that door will kill you from day one. There are doors that is not demons that close. God closes it as an act of his love so that you will listen to a message like this. When you hear a message like this and your heart is ever committed to see him glorified, then you can open the door. Years ago, the Lord told me something. Many of you may have heard me say it in my teachings. He said, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. That is it. If you will let men see me, take the stage, Lord. Have your way. Don't sing, just listen. I'm just a vessel. I am nothing more. When you're done, will you please take the glory? I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. Such a powerful song. It's easier song than lived. When you're done, you know what it means to be a celebrity? Please take the glory. I'm satisfied. To see you high and lifted up. You are shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. We'll see you high and lifted up. You are shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Someone will need, let me tell you, there is no door that God cannot open. The issue is, he has vetted your life and he has seen. If I promote this man to a billion naira realm, the casualty that will come from this obsession to see self glorified, will even lead this guy to backsliding he may even lose his salvation god weighs men and allocates liftings to men there are men of god no matter how they fast they will never be able to rise beyond certain spiritual states because god has vetted them and he has seen that if i trust this man with this kind of prophetic power that when you speak things happen and your anger problem is not dealt with. You will kill people in one week with that anointing. Are we learning now? I hope you are not offended. Vital sign number three. If all we do this morning is just the vital signs, I think we are... 
Dr. Jesus is diagnosing us. And many of us have seen that everything he's saying is right. Vital sign number three. Signs of spiritual retrogression. That's what I'm dealing with. Number three. Consistent, ever increasing compromise of your values and godly standards. That is the third vital sign of spiritual retrogression. Write it down please. Consistent, comma, ever increasing compromise of your values and your godly standards. Consistent, ever increasing compromise of your values and godly standards. These are signs of spiritual retrogression. Do you know, the first time Abraham gave Lot in Genesis 13, Abraham gave Lot an opportunity to choose a place where he would go because they were fighting. Lot, the Bible says, went and settled near Sodom. Someone say near Sodom. One more time, say near Sodom. He didn't enter Sodom. His first point of stay was near Sodom. By the time Abraham would go to rescue Lot, where did he find Lot? At the heart of Sodom. All Satan needs to do to destroy you is to keep you near what he wants to destroy you. And he leaves you there. Near a wrong company. Near wrong information. And he leaves you there. And he begins to buy you into it. Can I tell you? When you like today what you hated yesterday that was evil, you are in trouble already. Are we together? Ever increasing consistent ever increasing compromise of your values and godly standards there are people who would never wake up in the morning and start their day without prayer and devotion but right now it doesn't matter two months you've not opened your bible no prayer you just forgive yourself and sweep it under the carpet the moment you begin to compromise on your values in the office they used to share money and you say no problem i'm there but because of the economy, now you felt stupid for just allowing money to pass you like that. And you say, I won't be foolish like this again. I'm retiring in two years. I, I, I won't. After all, it's all our money. It's the national cake. This is what leads a lot of believers into some of these things. Now, please, don't get me wrong. I'm not condemning. We know that this is something that is only the grace of God that can help a man. I hope you understand that. But the truth is still the truth. Ever increasing there are ministers who when they started ministry, they made up their mind that money will never be my drive. And some of all these things will never be my drive. Until the day they kept you in a five-star hotel. Ah. And you say, so life can, there is a possibility of life at this level. Can I tell you? This is the reason why the prayer of mercy is a prayer that you need to pray every day. There are many times, many of us think it's easy to overcome certain things. It's because you've not experienced it. Compromise of your values. Compromise of your godly standards. I don't drink. But my best friend is a drunkard. Near Sodom. Keep watching. The day you are thirsty and there's nothing else to drink, you will be shocked and surprised. At what you, you will do. What will happen to you? Are we learning? I'm sorry. I hope I'm not offending you. Sincere apologies. How many of your values and your standards have you compromised thus far? It, it, there is a desperate call. Compromise is a very dangerous thing. It has a subtle way of destruction. It does not destroy in one day. Compromise destroys because of the accumulation and repetition of those, those compromise steps. You told a lie and you end a million naira from the lie. The memory of that one million will give you the freedom to lie easier the next time. 
It won't be harder the second time as it was the first again. You see it now. Until the day you find out that through compromise you've raised 100 million. Now, the day life comes to collect back that 100 million, it will come and you will give it back with interest. Are we learning? Can I tell you this? By this teaching, many of us have to trust God for grace. And use this year 2020 to say in the name of Jesus Christ, the associations, the practices, the people, and the company of friends that will not act, 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 encourage my consistency. There's no such thing as we're schoolmates, we're primary schoolmates. We, anybody who becomes a, a, a basis for compromising on your value, you don't have to hate them, but they deserve to be kept aside. If, if it is that mountain you are climbing in the spirit, you have to have the courage to shed off certain people. He said, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, I press. He didn't say I move, I press. That means there are resistances. Let's hurry up. Number four. Zy vital sign number four. Are we learning? What is the fourth vital sign of spiritual retrogression? decline in your spiritual convictions a decline in your spiritual convictions i don't even know if i believe this prayer again this prayer team kite thing is not working the moment there is a decline in your spiritual convictions lift up your hands let me speak over your life and ah please when when my landlord was almost killing me that was even the day you prophesied three times and nothing happened once there is a decline you begin to mock prophecy you mock the word of god are we together worship is going on and they say ah, in this presence of worship god is able to change people's lives and you are just watching and in your mind you are saying noise makers finish singing and let's sit down and wrap up this service do you know there is a way that the light of god your heart can be so close towards spiritual things that what used to make sense no longer makes sense they preach on giving as one of the principles that connects you to increase. You just laugh while they are saying it. And they say, oh dear, I pity these people. I've been giving since 1990. God should come and show me what benefit I've gotten from it. These are vital signs of spiritual retrogression. When you begin to mock the truth, when the truth no longer makes sense, it's a sign that a level of carnality would have eaten you up. You are no longer spiritual. Have you seen people who laugh at anything God? Evangelism, they laugh. What is there with winning souls? How are we even sure? And then they bring one or two occasions and now use it to mean that that thing is failed. For instance, you can say evangelism and they say, how many people in the church are really serious with God? And they begin another debate. My wicked landlord, is he not the one sitting there? And he's a member of that church. And they use those things as excuses. You know when people's convictions are dwindling because they find one or two legitimate case. The body of Christ is not a perfect place. God is still building his church. So it doesn't mean that just because there are one or two cases, you generalize and use it as an excuse. To deal with something that the problem is with you, the person. But you are only using an occasion to vent out your spiritual decadence. There are many people who would not give. So when they are talking about, say for instance, God forbid, but just an example. Oh, a pastor stole some money. They say, uh-huh, you see them. It's not about what the pastor stole. It's about their willingness to give. They are looking for a story that will legitimize their refusal to give. Decline in spiritual convictions. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I need 
your discipline I'm crying out listen for some of us God is speaking to you you need to go back to the things you once believed that brought power for you with God you once believed in fasting you once believed in prayer you once believed in the communion of the saints you once believed in prayer you once believed in the study of god's word you once submitted to the word of god as the absolute authority over your life he's calling you this morning it's time to return for many of us right now business connections are better than the favor of god for many of us right now human manipulations are better return return decline in spiritual convictions he says how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation i believe that without the ministry of the word and without prayer there is absolutely nothing my life can do that will count i believe that outside of the mercy of god there is absolutely nothing I can become. Can I tell you, go back home and write down your beliefs. What do you really believe? Be certain about the things that you believe. Luke chapter 1. Let's read the first four verses. Please help us, media. We'll find somewhere to pray now. Is God challenging us this morning? Luke chapter 1. For as much as many have taken in hand, to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. Did you see it there? There are things that must be most surely believed among believers. As a spiritual family like this, there are things that must be... You may argue about other things. I don't believe this one. But there are things that if you do not believe, you are not a Christian. You must believe in the incarnation of Jesus. You must believe that he walked upon the earth. You must believe in his sinlessness. You must believe that he died and he resurrected. You must believe that he is today enthroned as Lord and Christ. These are the things that must be most surely believed among us. We're reading to verse 4. Verse 2 now. Even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the world. 3. He said, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. Why? Verse 4. That thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. I don't just want you to believe them. I want you to be persuaded that the thing i believe is true it's not just because my pastor said it it's not just because a man of god there are many believers who intrinsically do not believe the truths they have heard they only believe the man who said it but they don't believe it they've not believed fasting as a personal revelation they've not believed giving as a personal revelation they've not believed prayer as a personal revelation they just have confidence in the one who preached it and their belief is just in loyalty to the preacher not connection to that truth we must cry that god will help us how do i know that you have been convicted over a truth number one you practice it number two you cannot be quiet about it it's impossible to be quiet about something you truly believe sooner or later it will slip out of you if you believe the word of god even when you are gisting and playing subconsciously scripture will come out if you believe in prayer even if you are acting and playing with your children subconsciously is prayer that will come out it, whatever comes out of you is what was in you first if you really believe in evangelism and your evangelism only happens when the church has an evangelism then you don't believe it you are only loyal to a corporate thing the church is doing if you only fast when there is a corporate fast you don't believe in fasting if you only give when there is a corporate demand maybe a project in church and they challenge people to give you don't believe in giving can i tell you this everything you truly believe in you believe in eating 
That's why you eat whether you are alone or not. You don't need supervision. You believe in bathing. Is that true? That's why you can go and take your bath. Whether you don't need supervision. The moment you need to be supervised so that you do it is not yet your conviction. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. Are you ready for the last one? The last vital sign that shows spiritual retrogression. A decline in your passion for the house of God. A decline in your passion for the house of God. A decline in your passion for the house of God. Can I tell you this? The house of God and your passion for the corporate gathering of believers is a very valid measure of your spiritual fire and your health. In 2020, when the pandemic was at its height, in many nations of the world, they declared um, sit at home for over how many months? About three months. Am I right on that? For many people, that, those three months was the worst spiritual moment of their lives. Because when they recalled people back, they were no longer Christians. We can easily laugh at Peter for being with Jesus for three years and running away from Jesus in 72 hours. But here we are, faithful members in a church for 10 years and simply because an occasion necessitated sitting at home for three months, many people were no longer Christians again. All right, you can now return to church. What for? Mm -mm. You love your finances. That's why you love the ATM. Do you eat the ATM? But the ATM stores your money. And because of that, you still have that passion to stand before the ATM because you know something in the ATM. It is not really the ATM, but at least I should see you if you really have money in your account. Is that true? You should frequent the ATM. Is that true? Just an example. Now, when you run away from the house of God, it is because something within you has told you there is no blessing in the house of God. Psalm 133. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It says it is like the oil that comes upon the head of Aaron. Is that true? That it comes to his bed, down to his skirts. He says, there in that gathering, the Lord had commanded the blessing. Can I tell you this? No matter how spiritual you are, there are certain things you will never get on your own. It is in the house of God. He says, when I came into the tabernacle, then understood I. There are certain levels of spiritual understanding you can never have when you are alone. Let me tell you one of the ways the devil destroys people. One of the ways the devil destroys people is to cut you away from the larger body of believers and leave you alone. When you are alone, he will now strike you in a way that there is nobody. You do not have that, that corporate covering again. Listen, how many of you have seen charcoal burning? Maybe you are burning something outside on a cold night. Red hot charcoal. You know what happens? Pick one, as red as it is. Just pick one and drop it. What begins to happen to it? Don't off the fire. Just pick one and drop it alone. What happens? You did not pour water on the charcoal. Just pick it out. That means the fire was burning not just because of the individual strength of that charcoal. The ability to be together is what kept the fire. How many of you have come to church weak and discouraged and as soon as you arrived, the song that was raised here just ministered to your spirit. It was as if the Holy Ghost just spoke to the worshippers and the announcement, one joke that someone cracked. Other people were laughing while you were crying because that joke was the answer to the prayer. All these things happen in church. And then comes the message, fire on the altar. By the time you are sharing the grace, you are equipped. You are saying, Satan, you come back again and see what I'm able to do. The reason why many of our children are becoming issues of concern 
is because many parents give them education but they did not give them passion for the house of god they went to school they have phones with all kinds of applications but you talk about anything that has to do with the house of god even if they come they frown their faces and hang around the door browsing and discussing discovering new apps the moment they hear the grace of our lord jesus christ let me encourage you nobody under your roof should serve another god they should leave your roof to go and serve another god provided you are under my roof the god who gave me the food you are eating is the one who will serve together do you agree on that don't allow people to come and stay under your roof and bring all kinds of opinions and i'm not talking of people who just came and visited you and you are the god who is giving me favor you are benefiting from it the god who answers my prayer you are a ben you are you are a recipient of that as for me and my house because god will hold you accountable for everyone who is under your roof who declines spiritually quick recap vital signs of spiritual retrogression number one significant deviation from your love for the lord and the things of the kingdom number two self-centered living as against christ-centered living the law for self self-glorification number three consistent ever increasing compromise of your values and godly standards number four a decline in your spiritual convictions number five a decline in your passion for the house of God a decline in your passion for the house of God when churches were sharing palliatives the moment people were aware that it was not preaching that was going on there but that there was bags of rice and beans and gari and indomie there were people who were not members people who had no business being around churches they came and they were patiently waiting with leather bags others even already put their their bags in their pocket so that there's no excuse you can't say where well, we get back i have it you just give me because most people listen so they had the passion for the house of god because they had that palliatives were being shared but when it has to do with the spiritual nourishment listen to what jesus said that man lives based on two things he lives on food and he lives on words you don't live on food alone man shall not live by bread alone but by every word if the only thing you are receiving is physical food you will still not live well there are certain words that must feed your spirit are we learning this morning why am I teaching this? Because if you want it to be a new dawn for you in your life and your destiny, you have to re-examine your current state. Is that true? You cannot go forward without identifying where you are and doing an honest appraisal on your life. Conferences like this also double as moments of retreats. Times when there is an honest God searches our hearts the psalmist will say search my heart and try my thoughts he says to know if there is any wicked way in me then lead me to the way everlasting for some of us based on these vital signs we have five over five am i right everything i mentioned you may be a victim of this is a marking script that even if you have one over five there is something wrong For some of us, it is deviation from your love for God. You have to return, like he said to the seven churches in Revelation. Returning to your first love. Your first love was not contracts. Your first love was not real estate. Your first love was not a federal government job. Your first love was Jesus. And he's crying that you return.
and then the desire to see Jesus glorified. Then for some of us, we need to carefully examine all the compromises we have allowed to happen in our lives. And don't postpone it till tomorrow. Some of you, after this service, you need to send certain text messages to people. Thank you so much, but I'm in a season in my life where I'm re-examining my values. And I sincerely apologize. Um, this our friendship may not hold as it has been again. I thank you for your understanding in advance. God bless you. And not feel guilty because you are on your way going forward. Love is a command. Relationship is not. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You must make up your mind. It has to be Jesus enthroned. Now unto the one upon the throne We raise a sound We raise a sound For he is God and God alone Hallelujah Hallelujah Now unto the Lamb upon the throne We raise a sound We raise a sound Over the nations of the earth Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is only one name. There is only one name with power to save. Oh, this I believe. He has power to save. salvation in any other for there is no name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved can I tell you this kings will rise and kings will fall governments will come and governments will go I don't care what political party people will get jobs and people will retire young people will become parents and they will become grandparents there is only one thing that does not change. The reign of his majesty seated upon the throne. Every other thing will change. Every parent today was once a baby. Every grandfather was once a parent. Crown him king of kings. Crown him lord of lords. Wonderful Counselor, the mighty God, Emmanuel, God is with us, and He shall reign. He shall reign, He shall reign forevermore. Not the government, not your kings. He shall reign, He shall reign, He shall reign forevermore. We're about to pray. The Lord sent me here this morning to wake us up and to challenge us it is not a call to condemnation but it's a call to a greater press for spiritual things no matter what you earn no matter who you are no matter what you have the ultimate index for measuring 
your progress in life is your relationship with Jesus. Take it down for me, please. Said and done. There is just one thing that matters. Did I do my best to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done, all my treasures will mean nothing. Only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time. Listen to me. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but let me announce to you that if Christ tarries, whether you like it or not, one day this life will be wrapped up. No matter how young and no matter how old, this earth has been a house that has hosted many people. Many of them have gone. Some of them left legacies of shame and pain as a result of rejecting Jesus. Some of them left legacies of honor. Some never had the privilege of going to school. Some never had the privilege of becoming great people. But if all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to my world. Jesus is more than gold. That at the end of your life, your bank account does not follow you. I'm not discouraging productivity. I'm challenging and reprioritizing our passion. Nobody will go to heaven as a couple. Nobody will go to heaven as a CEO. Nobody will go to heaven as an apostle or a prophet or a reverend. Uh -uh. Our designers, as wonderful as they are, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, thank God for them. They remain in the wardrobe as we go. Even your Bible will not follow you. It is only what is in your heart that goes with you. This is a call this morning to re-examine our lives. Because for many of us, the way we have been living, we are not living circumspectly. We have majored on minors and minored on majors. Every other thing finds its relevance when Christ is at the center of what you are doing. We are going to pray. And this prayer is not a general prayer. It's a personal prayer. Within the time I have left, I will just give us five minutes. I don't know how you are going to cry before the Lord this morning. But it is going to be a, a complete surrender before Jesus. There is nothing to be ashamed of. While I'm speaking right now, the Holy Ghost is speaking to you. Showing you from this list vital signs of spiritual retrogression. It's telling you this is what I've been showing you in dreams. The other day when I sent somebody to talk to you, this was what I was trying to say. Since you did not understand it, I now brought you to this conference. Can I tell you, woe betides a man who hears the chastening of the Lord and does not break down in repentance. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. So you'll do what you do. We need a move. This is the move. See, let me tell you this. When I go before God, I don't go as MOG. I'll be stupid to do that. When I go before God, I don't thank God for the things that people say about Joshua Selman. 
let his name be glorified for it but when i go before my god and my maker i roll before him and say lord your boy is here again it is by your mercy that i am kept and if you withdraw your mercy from my life for one minute i will be a catastrophe multiplied so this is the kind of attitude that receives the attention of god sometimes this our arrogance before god is the reason why we don't receive anything let that man not think he will receive anything from the lord i'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing i've made it when it's all about you it's all about you jesus. now in the next five minutes i don't know whether you will lie down whether you will stand up i leave you with your creator for the next five minutes let there be an outbreak of a genuine spirit of repentance a genuine manifestation of brokenness before god cry before your maker show me mercy god of heaven arise like the mighty god that you are cry before him forget about who is by your left and right this is before your maker i cast the highest royalty i am undone before keep praying your royal majesty i cast my crown before the highest royalty i am undone before your glorious majesty truly cast my crown before the highest royalty i am undone before your glorious majesty i cast my heart before your glorious majesty i am undone before your glorious majesty go ahead and pray search my heart O god purify my motives restore me back to your presence he said cast not away your presence from me cast me not away from your presence take not your spirit from me restore 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 some of you pray restore back the joy of my salvation lord it was not like this from the 1980 1980 to 1990 it was not like this restore that fellowship restore that fellowship restore that fellowship restore my prayer life restore my word life restore my passion for the house of god restore my passion for you please pray five more minutes take over take over i have come to the end of myself take over take over i have come to the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah i have come to the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah i have come to the end of myself take over take over i have come to the end of myself please pray there are some of you by now you would have been a mighty vessel in the hand of god there are nations that are dying because the grace that should come upon your life your retrogression 
is making others go to hell. Find that flame back again. Lord, I'm ready. In 2022, I am ready. Here at this conference, we can start again. We can start again. We can start again. Oh God of heaven, we can start again. The prodigal son said, How many hired servants does my father have? And I am here feeding with the swine. He said, I will arise and I will go to my father. I will say, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your slaves. Someone pray. You are not praying as a couple. You are not praying as a parent. You are praying as one who has been purchased by the blood of Jesus. Give me a new beginning, O God. The psalmist said, create in me a clean heart to renew a right spirit within me. One more minute. Someone is praying. It's time to win that war of destiny. Once and for all. There are many fathers here who have not stood up to their spiritual responsibility. You've stood up to your financial responsibility. To parenting responsibility. But perhaps not your spiritual responsibility. In the name of Jesus Christ. While still in that position of soul searching and genuine repentance. Whoever will come to him, the Bible says he will in no wise cast away. Now. There are people in this place this morning, even if it is just one person, I know that there are people repenting, everybody including me, all of us together, who are crying before him. But hear me, there are specific people here right now. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you and saying, as it is, you've been completely connected from this Jesus agenda. You need to make your ways right. You need to be born again. You see, moments like this, nobody will force you. It is between you and the God of your salvation. Before I pray and speak over your life, by the way, please invite everybody you can find to come tonight and all through this conference. You can see what people here have missed because of lack of discernment. Some of you, whilst you are here right now, the Holy Ghost is speaking to you. You know somebody, you know this is the kind of meeting they need. What they need is not counseling. What they need is brokenness before God. But for this morning, I know that there's someone here who is saying, Jesus, 
like the prodigal son i'm ready to come back home wherever you are please let this not be an emotional thing this is a serious thing you are here any of the overflow i want to count three i want to leave your seat and come and stand right here i want to lead you through that prayer one You can win that war this morning. For I am ready to hand over everything to Jesus. Genuinely. Not just some emotional church thing. Genuinely. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom I choose the way of the Lord for the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom I choose the way of the Lord now for those of you in front here some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears this is a family God is giving us a new beginning. You're on your knees, many of you. I want you to pray this prayer after me. You don't have to look at me. Jesus is the most important person here. But I want you to pray it from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. Mean what you are saying. Please say after me, wherever you are, say, Lord Jesus, this morning, I have heard your word. I need you like never before i come before you with genuine repentance i ask you to forgive my sins jesus have mercy on me i declare that from today and forever you are my savior you are my lord you are my king Say, Lord Jesus, I receive eternal life into my spirit. And I declare that from tonight, I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. The power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I am a child of God and I walk in victory. In Jesus' name.